I've recently been bombarded with emails from people saying that I'm delusional about the clean energy transformation, the transition to clean energy from coal and even from nuclear. They're saying that it's impossible. It cannot work. There's not enough land. There's all these reasons they're coming up with. Are they actually right? Well, the answer is no. No, I'm not delusional. No, you're not delusional. The clean energy transition is happening no matter what the naysayers say. This is how much land we need for all of the United States' energy. It's actually not that much. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. Thank you for tuning in. I'm coming to you from actually not Melbourne in Australia. I'm so used to saying that. I'm actually now in Bangkok in Thailand. My wife's here getting cancer treatments. If you want to know more about that, I'll put a link in the description below. But um, we do have a GoFundMe campaign. Thank you to all of you who have supported us. It's been incredible. Costs around 10000 a week for the treatments. They are starting to work. Thank you so much. So the clean energy transformation, it's amazing. I've reported on this so many times over the last, what, year and a half since we started this channel, just over a year and a half. What's happening now is incredible. And the reason it's so incredible is because we have this amazing place. What do I mean by that? Well, in Adelaide, South Australia, in Australia, we have a city that basically runs on solar and wind. It does. First city in the world to do this. Now, there are other examples of this, but not on a big scale. Not where we're talking millions of people in a city at this level. And this city has proved that, yes, it is very possible to run solely on wind, solar, and battery power. Critics of wind and solar routinely raise concerns, say Clean Technica, about how much land would be required to decarbonize completely the US power sector. In other words, to move away from gas, no more gas, no nuclear, no coal. Fortunately, the answer is not very much. In fact, a tiny amount of land. A recent National Renewable Energy Laboratory study shows it takes less or will take less than 1% of the land in the lower 48 states. That's an area comparable or even smaller than the fossil fuel industry's current footprint. And when wind and solar projects are responsibly cited, the environmental and public health impacts will be far less harmful than those from extracting, producing and burning fossil fuels. Now, this study was good. I had a look at it. It's interesting. It's not really true. It's not. I'll tell you why. Because actually that 1% of land, much of it is simply land that's being used now that will continue to be used as the same way it is. Here's what I'm talking about. Farmers all over the world are deploying solar panels. I mean, solar farms on their farms because it's brilliant. The grass grows better under the solar panels. The sheep and the cows and the animals, they get, they get shade. It works so well. Now, is it worth even counting that land? Because all we're doing is basically, all those farmers are doing is essentially using their land in a better way that makes more sense. It's really less than 1% when you look at it that way. As for wind, well, offshore wind, what do we do with the oceans? I mean, I mean, seriously, we don't use the land at all. We don't, we have shipping lanes where boats go, but ultimately having a wind farm, an offshore wind farm every now and then, dot along the coast really doesn't change anything. So do we really need even 1% of land? In fact, it's way less than 1%. Now, Clean Technica says that a key role for wind and solar is the fact that renewables will not require an inordinate amount of land. And that's awesome news because limiting climate change's worst impacts requires us to cut global heat trapping emissions roughly in half by 2030 and to achieve net zero emissions by 2050, according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. Acknowledging that the United States is a leading contributor to carbon emissions, the Biden administration has committed to cutting US emissions 50 to 52% below 2005 levels by 2030. That's a big change. Most studies show that achieving these targets will require an unprecedented increase in wind and solar power to decarbonize the power sector and meet the increased demand for zero carbon electricity to replace fossil fuels in building, industrial and transportation sectors. This year already, the cost of solar panels has declined 
by 30%. Industry experts say the cost by the end of the year will have come down by 50%. The raw materials costs going into solar panels has come down already by 50%, already, right? It's amazing. What a moment this is in history. The cost of wind has never been lower. Wind turbines are getting bigger and bigger and becoming more and more efficient. That's the, that's the key word too. Declining costs and increases in efficiency. Solar panel efficiency continues to go up every single year. We're seeing innovations in inverters, in the actual efficiency of the panels themselves, in the lifetime, the longevity of the panels. Everything is improving. A 2022 NREL study found that to achieve President Biden's goal of generating 80% zero carbon electricity by 2030 and 100% by 2035, America, the United States, needs to increase wind and solar power from about 14% of the US electricity mix in 2022 to between 60 and 75% by 2035 under the main scenarios. When combined with modest increases in geothermal and hydropower capacity at existing unpowered dams and upgrades to existing facilities, renewable energy would provide 70 to 85% of total US electricity generation by 2035. It can happen. I'm telling you now, I firmly believe it will happen. NREL projects that most of the remaining generation would come from existing nuclear plants and a small amount from gas plants, carbon capture, and storage, hydrogen, and biogas. NREL also found that meeting the growing demand for zero carbon electricity means overall US generation capacity needs to roughly triple, or will roughly triple, between 2020 and 2035, including a combined 2,000 gigawatts of wind and solar capacity. This would require growth rates in the range of 43 to 90 gigawatts per year for solar and 70 to 145 gigawatts per year for wind by the end of this decade, which would mean more than quadrupling the current annual deployment rates for each technology. But as the cost of those technologies continues to come down and their efficiency continues to climb, they're making fossil fuels very, very expensive. I mean, for example, in Europe, Europe says they've saved more than $25 billion over the last 12 months because they've been forced to start using renewable energy more. It saves money. An Oxford study said the world would save $10 trillion if we move to renewable energy completely in the West by 2040. Although siting, permitting, and ramping up manufacturing for all of this new wind and solar generation will be challenging in this time frame, says Clean Technica, NREL study and other studies say it is technically and economically feasible. For example, about 930 gigawatts of wind and solar capacity and 420 gigawatts of storage projects are now awaiting approval to connect to the transmission system, according to Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. This year alone, developers are planning to install 29 gigawatts of utility scale solar. That's more than double the current record and represents more than half of all new US capacity, according to recent Energy Information Administration data. EIA also projects US battery storage capacity to more than double in 2023. Now, the Federal Inflation Reduction Act will have a huge difference by making available hundreds of billions of dollars in new incentives for these technologies. NREL's 2022 standard scenarios study found that these federal incentives would accelerate the deployment of wind and solar, helping to reduce US power sector carbon dioxide emissions to 80% below 2005 levels by 2030. NREL found that the land area directly occupied by wind and solar infrastructure by 2035 would make up less than 1% of the land in 94% of the country and less than or equal to 7% of total land area in only three states. Key reason why a relatively small amount of land is needed is because only 2% of the total area within a wind farm is occupied by wind infrastructure, while the remaining 98% can be used for agriculture, grazing, planting vegetables, whatever you want to do. Offshore wind turbines have a relatively small footprint 
and are able to use much larger turbines than land-based projects. Rooftop solar, meanwhile, doesn't require any land at all. To deliver all of this clean energy from wind-rich regions in the Midwest and Plains states to major load centers in the East will require a lot of transmission lines. NREL found that total U.S. transmission capacity would have to increase by 1.3 to 2.9 times current levels by 2035. This would require 1,400 to 10,000 miles of new high capacity lines per year, assuming new construction began in 2026. Now that's a wide gap. So that's really neither here nor there. We really don't know yet exactly how much will be needed. The big news, NREL found that the total amount of land needed by 2035 to achieve clean power goals with wind, solar, and long distance transmission lines is equivalent to the land area currently occupied by railroads, 18,500 square meters, less than half the area of active oil and gas leases, less than one third of the area currently needed for ethanol production, and only slightly more than the historically disturbed land area for coal mining. In addition, the scenario projects that roughly 250,000 wind turbines in the United States will be deployed, which is a lot less than the 1.5 million oil and gas wells. Think about it, right? Replacing 1.5 million oil and gas wells with 250,000 wind turbines, a lot of rooftop solar, and a bunch of solar panels on solar farms sounds amazing to me. The future of renewable energy is, it's not what people think. It's not nuclear. It's not coal. It's not gas. It's wind, solar, and battery storage, whether that be sodium ion batteries, lithium ion phosphate batteries, or some other new battery technology. It doesn't matter. It's happening. It will happen. And regardless of what the naysayers say, we're on our way to getting there. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Bye-bye.